Hello and welcome to my first ever tutorial. This tutorial is about the video you just saw, the dancing man on the MacBook. I will show you how to create just that. You need After Effects, Adobe Fuse and obviously Blender. Uh, also Element 3D is very useful. So let's get started, shall we? First we start creating a model with Adobe Fuse and we are creating one from the uh, built-in uh, assembly kits so first we select a, a head which is male fit alpha you can uh, customize the head later on but you can make it fatter or narrower or make the ears bigger uh, yeah not really yep that's better so uh, a torso male fit as well some legs and of course some arms so now it's time to put some clothing on uh, here you can customize it as well you can make the biceps bigger doesn't do a whole lot but mm, you get the general idea okay clothing um, I want to have the trench coat and some pants as well. Dress pants is good. Some shoes, expensive fancy shoes. So now it looks like a complete character. The only thing I want is some hair. Mm, let's see. Maybe this. Yeah, that's okay. Of course, a hat would be nice. The hair is coming through, but will be fixed. There we go. Some shades, pilot shades. Here we go. And maybe uh, some facial hair as well. Let me see. The goatee. Mm. This is better, I think. Yeah, it's better. So, model is finished. Now, to give it some animation, it's very easy actually. We have to send it to uh, Mixamo. Uh, change the name. Tutorial model. Of course, you can use a different name. That's up to you. This takes a while, so I'm going to pause the video and uh, we'll be right back. Alright, we're back in uh, Mixamo. Here's the model. It's uh, it's already animating. It's a default animation. Can't really do anything up to this point, but you just have to click Finish. Uh, your character has been updated. OK. Let's go to Animate. And here you can pretty much click any animation you want. For example, Thriller. You can see it starts to dance. It's really nice. This um, animation we don't want. We want Gangnam Style. And if I search for Gangnam, yep, there it is. You can see it starts to move in the exact same fashion as the uh, Asian guy did. So, um, up to now, you have to click Add to My Assets. It has been added to your assets. So go to My Assets. My animation. Uh, it's still processing. It might take a while. And here on the animation, you click this, the animation you want. Then you click to Q download. And you want to change it to Collada because a Collada file you can import with Blender later on. The rest you can leave default, maybe you can change the frame rate if you want something different, but I leave it to 30. And Q download. Now this takes a while, so I'm going to pause the video again. Right, the download file has been processed, it's ready to download. So you might want to click the download button. This can take a while, depending on your internet speed. 
file is not too big. About 40 megabytes. Uh, unzip the file, obviously. That's it. The Collada file and the textures are over here. So now we're going to start Blender. All right, now in Blender, you want to import the uh, animation file. But first, we want to delete every single object. So there's a cube, a camera, and a light. So click the cube, press delete, X, and again, and the light as well. And go to File, Import, Collada. Go to your download folder. Where is it? Gangnam Style. This one, Import. It's going to take a while. Ooh, not so bad, actually. So here it is, and when you click the Start Animation and Play Animation, you can see it's animating. Pretty cool, eh? Alright, go back to the uh, start of the animation. Now, before you can use this file in um, Element 3D, you need to export it again. This time to OBJ file, Wavefront OBJ file. Now the most important thing here is the selection box animation. If you don't do that, the only the first frame will animate and you have a static figure. So go to your folder where you want to export it. You, you want to have a folder because it makes an OBJ file for every single frame, so 250 in this case. And that again takes a while, so I'm going to pause the video and come back pretty damn soon. Alright, the um, OBJ export is done. As you can see, it created 250 OBJ files and also 250 material files. And it's about 800 megabytes big, so it takes quite some storage. Just imagine if you have an animation that lasts 10 minutes. It's going to take forever. To complete and takes a lot of space. So now you want to have uh, a new After Effects um, project. Obviously you need some footage and I've shot some footage of my MacBook. Nothing fancy, just a um, random take. So you want to have a, the shot in here and one of the first things you need to do is obviously motion tracking. So when you have your footage in a sequence, you're gonna search for effects and type in 3D camera tracker. Track the effects on the footage and it starts to analyze. Again, this takes some time, so I will be back. All right, it took about five to six minutes to track and now it's done. As you can see, it's created all these little dots and what we are interested in this part so when I select this one this one and this one you can see it's uh, pretty good you can uh, select them again and you right click it and click uh, create null and camera that's what you want to do a null and a camera. Right. What you also want to do if you want to check if the track is, is correct, select the three points again, right click and create solid. You can see it creates a little plane here. When you press the space bar, it starts to animate the, uh, the footage. And, well, it, it seems pretty damn solid to me. I don't think you could have a better track than this one. Oh, well, looks okay. Press space again, rewind. You can delete the solid track. Don't need it anymore. But we still have the track null. Right, now it's time for the fun part. Element 3D. First, in order to use Element 3D, we need to have a solid. I always like to keep things organized, so I use the name E3D, Element 3D. Color doesn't really matter, default is good. Uh, now, it's, it's a black solid, you can't use it, so now you need to 
search for the plugin element, drag it onto the solid, and it becomes transparent again. Then you can see here is a scene setup button. Press it, and Element 3D boots up. So in Element 3D, you can also create objects. That's exactly what we're going to do first. Uh, create a cube. Try to align it to the grid. It's not very easy at first, but it doesn't have to be exactly precise. So I think that will do. Press OK. And as you can see, there's a big square here, but it's, it doesn't look very 3D. So, to help you make it look any better, we want to have a group null. So, select group 1. Drill down until you see create group null and there's a create button. So click that. Um, select a tracking null which you created earlier. Press P for position. Click on position. Ctrl C or right click. Uh, no, there's no right click there. So co just copy the position. Go to the group null. Paste. So now the position is alright, but the rotation isn't. So go back to the track now, press R for rotation, copy orientation, select the group now, paste it, and as you can see, it's properly aligned now. It's in exactly the same rotation and position, and that looks about right. Obviously, it's not a dancing puppet, but we're going to change that very soon. In fact, we're going to change it now. So, you can hide the box, we don't need it anymore. Go to Import, nope, sorry, on this one, Import 3D Sequence. This is very important because we export it as a sequence. Um, I mean, no, no, I've imported again as a sequence. Where's my folder? Tutorial, OBJ, Game Style, select the first one. And here we go. Uh, you don't have to change anything here, I suppose. So click OK. Now it's here, but it is extremely small. So you might want to scale it up. Press the scale button here. Hold the mouse until you see a square and just drag it any bigger. Now align it back to the grid again because now it's in the middle. You don't want that. Just about here. Yeah, I think it's good. It's okay. Press OK. There it is. But it is still extremely tiny. So go back into Element 3D. Scale it up again and again and again until it fits your scene. So. That's not good. You may want to move it up a little bit. Just about here. Okay. So as you can see, it is properly aligned, but it's looking quite stupid laying on its back. That's not alright. So go back to group one, go to particle replicator, uh, rotation, and just Fiddle around until you think it is, looks alright. In this case, I think about 76. It changes back to the original value, but it is in the correct position. And here, you can see it is animating. It's dancing, the camera is moving properly. Yeah, it's working. But, uh, it looks fake. It looks fake because there's no light and no shadows. As you can see here, to the right side, left side of the laptop, you can see a little shadow. Also, the keys have some shadow, so we might want to change that. One of the first things we need to do if we want to have shadows is a, a plate to cast shadow on. So go back to um, Element 3D, create a plane, which is this one. Make it a little bit bigger because this is too small, like so. 
select the plane there's another plane this is the plane select the material scroll down where is it and select uh, matte shadow that hides the plane from the camera but it's still there but it will only render the shadow so click OK nothing has changed what is wrong nothing's wrong you just don't have a light there's no light so first well, sorry first we need to enable oh go back to After Effects first we need to enable the shadow and you enable shadows by going to the element 3D settings render settings shadows enable shadow and I like to use ray tracing shadow okay there's still no shadow because there's no light so first we're going to create a light and here is the light and I like to use spotlight car shadow should be enabled um, I've used this before but default it's 100% in this case 100% is a little bit too harsh you need uh, I think about 30 30 to 40 percent shadow here we go now this is the difficult part to align your light never really works as I wanted to so as you can see the shadow is casting this way to the left so you might want to fiddle around until you find your proper position uh, what I usually do is change the camera from active camera to front, left, top, back, right until you have the position perfectly aligned for the shadow you want. So I'm going to pause the video and um, fiddle around with the positions. And Right, the light is correct now. Took a fair bit of time, but um, yeah, it's not the most uh, useful interface of changing the light. So you might want to invest some time in it but now the light is correctly it's somewhat correctly but the shadow is not looking really nice I think and that has to do because of the rendering settings the default render settings are not very mm, not very good I would say but good enough for most things but not for shadows so when you want to have correct shadows you go to render settings shadows ray trace shadows and increase this one I like to use 10 the maximum As you can see here I'll show you the difference this is one very pixelating and this is 10 quite smooth don't you agree I think so you also want to have this one enabled ambient occlusion enable it just by clicking the checkbox you can see it, it creates a little bit of a darker model so it fits in the scene better uh, you can fiddle around with these settings as well the intensity you know the higher the more times it takes to render but it usually looks better samples are eight defaults I like to use 64 uh, this one as well 16 don't really see a huge difference but I don't know you might want to invest some time in the rendering the more time it takes the better the end result usually is okay so now um, everything's done the only thing you need to do is add some music and uh, export the video I hope you liked the tutorial and uh, hope to see you in the next one uh, don't forget to like and subscribe obviously ta-ta for now